friends. Groucho was a young rabbit. His best friend's name was Calico. Calico was a pretty little cat. One winter morning, Calico found a big white wool ball. She meowed to call Groucho. Meow, meow. Groucho immediately ran to her. Calico showed him the wool ball and they started playing with it. Soon, Groucho got entangled in the wool and struggled to come out of it. He started crying. Calico tried to help him but was unable to set him free. Calico asked Groucho to calm down and quickly ran to get help. Help! 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 Aunt Rat was passing by. She asked Calico, What is the matter, my dear? Calico said, Please help us. My friend Groucho is entangled in a wool ball. Aunt Rat said, Do not worry. I will help you. She then went with Calico and cut the wool with her sharp teeth and set Groucho free. Calico proved that she was a true friend to Groucho. Too proud to be friends A swan and a crane lived on the different sides of a lake. Every day they went out in search of food and returned in the evening. Their life had become very boring. To make life more interesting, the swan decided to be friends with the crane. However, the crane said, Your legs are short and mine are long. How can we be friends? Later, the crane realized her mistake and went to the swan's house. This time the swan refused. I cannot be your friend because your neck is not long and straight like me. After a while, the swan decided to be the crane's friend. However, again the crane refused. So they lived alone on the different sides of the lake and they often met with the proposal to be friends. Every time, they were too proud to accept it. They are still alone when they could easily become friends. The Ungrateful Snake Once a traveler saved a snake. The sly snake tried to bite him. The traveler shouted, Please stop. Let a wise person decide this for us. Just then, a jackal came along. The traveler asked him, I freed this snake when she was under the stone and now she wants to bite me. It is not fair that she bites me when I helped her. Is it? The wise jackal replied, I don't believe you unless I see the incident repeat itself. So they went to the place where it all happened. There the jackal said, Lie down snake. When the snake did so, the traveler covered her with the stone. When he was about to release her, the jackal said, Do not lift the stone. The ungrateful one wanted to bite you. So let her free herself. Then they went away, leaving the snake under the stone. The Clever Ostrich A proud lioness felt that only the ostrich was her equal match and made friends with her. One day she said, Ostrich, will you come with me to catch prey? The ostrich agreed. They saw some quails and ran after them. The lioness caught one quail but the ostrich killed many by striking them with her claw. When the lioness saw this, she was jealous. That night, the lioness cubs noticed that the ostrich had no teeth. They went to their mother and said, Who says she is your equal? She has no teeth. This made the lioness very proud and challenged the ostrich. Get up and fight, the clever ostrich said. Do you see an anthill there? Go to that side of the anthill and I will go to this side of it. The ostrich struck the anthill and sent the ants towards the lioness. As the lioness fought the ants, the ostrich ran away and never came back. The Cunning Hyena A hungry hyena stood under a dove's nest and demanded, You had better give me one of your chicks or I shall fly up and eat all of you. 
the poor dove was scared. Weeping, she gave the hyena her chick. After the hyena had left, a parrot came to visit the dove. The dove cried, "The hyena has taken my chick." He said that he would fly up and eat us all. So I had to give him one of my chicks. The parrot said, "You are such a fool. Don't you know that hyenas cannot fly? Don't let him trick you any more." The next day, when the hyena came back, the dove said, "You cannot fool me any more. I was told that hyenas don't fly." The surprised hyena asked, "Who said that to you?" The dove said, "My wise friend, the parrot did." The hyena walked away very disappointed as he could not trick the dove again. The swans next. Long ago, swans had graceful bodies and short necks. On the other hand, ducks had big and bulky bodies. One day, an argument started between the swans and the ducks. The proud swans said, We will swim first as we are more beautiful. The ducks angrily said, "We should swim first because the last time you refused to let us have our turn." At the same time, a flock of geese flew by. They stopped to settle the argument. One of the geese said, "This pond is quite large. You both can share it." The swans were not satisfied with the settlement and a fight broke out. The ducks bit the swans' necks and pulled them hard. The swans' necks had stretched so long that they almost lost their balance. They finally managed to fold their necks in a way that they could steadily hold them. Accepting their defeat, the swans shared the bond with the ducks and swam in turns leftovers for platypus long ago all the animals in the forest looked the same even mother earth who had created them could not tell the difference so she sent out a message i am going to change how everyone looks like so all the animals are requested to come and see me a platypus was under the water playing with his friend the fish he did not hear mother earth's message he was playing even after the fish had gone when she came back with shining scales and fins the platypus learned about the message however by the time he reached mother earth's home there were only leftovers He was given a beaver's tail, a duck's bill and flippers and a bear's fur and claws at the end of the flippers. When he came back, the fish laughed at him. The platypus was so embarrassed that he dug a hole in the ground near the river to live in. He continues to live there even now. The monkeys learn a lesson. A group of monkeys always troubled the animals that came to drink from the lake of the forest. One day, a herd of zebras was drinking water from the lake. As usual, the monkeys started throwing twigs at them. One of the mares came with her little foal. The twig hurt her leg badly. As the other zebras dressed her wound, the foal started crying. Seeing this, a young zebra stallion said, "Monkeys, why do you trouble innocent animals? Don't you see that the animals could be wounded?" The monkeys only laughed and teased them. The angry stallion lifted a monkey and placed him on a hot rock. This burned his buttocks and legs. Then the stallion kicked another monkey so hard. that he went flying to the other end of the lake the rest of the monkeys ran away and never came back to the lake again since that day they stopped playing tricks on other animals the rock on the tortoise's back this was the time 
when the tortoise did not have shells on its body. One such tortoise was running a race with a deer. Suddenly, he tripped and fell down from a deep rocky hill. When he woke up, he was spinning on his back. He felt dizzy. He also felt a lot of pain. When the tortoise tried to get up, he could not. He felt something hard and heavy on his back. He realized that he had a cracked rock on his wrinkly body. The deer came down the hill and tried to pull the rock off the tortoise's back. However, the tortoise screamed in pain because the rock would not come off. Then the deer said, You look better with the rock and it will protect you from the sun. Now let us have another race. The tortoise said, No thanks and he curled up inside his rock. Since then, the tortoise had a shelf forever. The Leopard's Spots A leopard and his wife were invited to a jungle party. They both wanted to look very special. So they decided, since each of us has a plain yellow coat, let's paint something on it. The leopard brought a pint of black paint but could not decide what to paint on their bodies. After a while, the leopard and his wife looked at each other and shouted in unison, Spots of black! They both painted black spots on their yellow coats and went to the party later that night. Everyone at the party loved their new creation. Soon all the leopards painted black spots on their coats. After a while, the leopard and his wife were tired of the spots. However, when they tried to wash off their coats, the paint had sunk in well beyond the fur. They could not get it off. The other leopards could not get it off either. To this day, leopards still cannot get their spots off. The Clever Crocodile When hippopotamuses lived on land, there was a hippo king named Lionel. He had a beautiful wife and seven children. The king loved to give big feasts but strangely, no animal knew his name except for his wife. During one feast, Lionel said to his guests, You all have attended many of my feasts and yet None of you know my name. If you cannot say my name, you are requested to leave. As all the animals left, a crocodile said, What if I could say your name in the next feast? Lionel said, Then I will live in the water forever. The crocodile thought of a plan. He dug a hole and buried himself. When Lionel's wife was walking to the river, she tripped over him and screamed, Lionel, please help me. Thus, the crocodile learnt the hippo king's name. At the next feast, he said it as promised. Lionel and his family went to live in the river. Foolish Monkeys Once, heavy rains were flooding the river bank and all the animals were running up the hills. Some monkeys had climbed up the treetops to save themselves. When they saw the swimming fish, one of the foolish monkeys said, The fish are going to be drowned. See how they are struggling in the water. The other monkey joined in. I think they were left behind because they do not have legs. The first monkey said, Let us help them to get out. One by one, the monkeys brought all the fish out of the water and put them carefully on the dry land. The first monkey said, They were tired, so they are sleeping. Had it not been for us, all these poor fish would have been drowned. The other monkey said, When they wake up, they will be very grateful. The foolish monkeys did not know that the fish were all dead. The main zebra. 
Long ago, all the zebras had eyes in front of their heads. A female zebra always praised herself. I am so beautiful. Look at my lovely stripes and tail. However, her favorite thing to boast about was her eyes. Aren't my eyes so perfectly placed in the front of my head? She said. All the animals would whisper behind her. She always brags, vain creature. Soon they became so annoyed that they started planning to play a trick on her. One day, when the zebra walked past the jackal, she said, "Are my eyes not the most beautiful you have ever seen?" "Yes," replied the jackal cunningly. Suddenly, he pounced on her. and she fell very hard on her face this forced her eyes to the side of her head when the zebra saw her reflection in a stream nearby she was angry at the jackal she turned around to punish him but the jackal was gone the bold vulture once a vulture noticed that his feathers were falling off When he asked other birds, they said, "You are losing feathers. Don't worry, new feathers would grow soon." However, the vulture was very upset. Soon he became thin and sickly with worry about his feathers. The other birds pitied him, and each of them gave him a feather to stick on his body. When all the birds had given him their feathers, The vulture became a beautiful bird with the feathers of all colors. He then became very arrogant, showing off his borrowed feathers. He declared that he was the most beautiful of all the birds. He became so proud that he asked the birds to recognize him as their king. The angry birds pecked off the feathers that they had given him. and took them away that is why even to the present day the vulture is a grim ugly and bold bird the fly and the buffalo once the queen of the forest invited her subjects to a grand feast she had arranged for four large tables and said the wild buffalo the elephant the hippopotamus and the rhinoceros will head each of the tables they will in turn share the food with the smaller animals at the buffalo's table there was a small fly the buffalo shared the first course of food among the other animals but forgot the fly so the fly shouted you have not given me my share the buffalo ignored him during the second course The fly called out again, but the buffalo pointed at his eyes and said, "Look here, you will get your food later." When the fly complained, the queen of the forest said, "It is indeed the buffalo's mistake for not giving food to the fly. In future, the fly can get food from the buffalo's eyes as he pointed at them. Therefore, Flies are always seen around a buffalo's eyes. The hasty hunter. A hunter came to a forest and saw a fox sleeping on the top of a big rock. The hunter thought, "If I kill that fox and sell the skin, I'll make a fortune." Then Taking a heavy stone in his fist, the hunter thought, "With that money, I shall buy some seeds, and I shall sow the seeds in my father's corn field at home." People passing by my field of corn will say, "Oh, what great corn that hunter has!" Then I shall say to them, "Keep away from my corn," but they won't listen to me. Then. I shall shout again stay away from my corn but still they won't take any notice of me then 
I shall scream with all my might. Keep away from my horn. And then they listen. And the hunter screamed so loudly that the fox woke up and ran away. The hunter regretted his hasty behavior and went home empty-handed. The King Owl An owl flew to an oak tree at the end of the forest to pick up his food every night. The other owls asked him, How do you get your food so easily? The owl said, One night I saw a half-chopped bar of an oak tree. It was full of insects and mice. When I tried to catch the mice, they ran away quickly. So I thought of an idea and I brought wheat to feed the mice. Soon they became fat and healthy. They could not run fast either. They thought I was their friend and waited each day for me to bring them food. He continued, I brought food for the mice faithfully. Then I started picking up one mouse each day and took it home to eat. In this way, the clever owl did not have to search for food ever again. The other owls were so impressed that they appointed him as their king. The Revengeful Woodcutter One day, a woodcutter's son threw a stone at a snake. The upset snake bit the boy and he fainted. Even after the cure, the boy was in great pain. When the woodcutter saw this, he was angry and wanted to take revenge. So the woodcutter took his axe and hit the snake. However, instead of the snake's head, he cut off his tail. The snake was in great pain, but he quickly slithered back into his hole. The woodcutter sat for a long time outside the snake's hole waiting for him to come out. Then he thought, what if the snake comes back for revenge and bites me? I must become friendly with him. So he put some bread and milk in front of the hole. When the snake saw this from his hole, he called out, Woodcutter, as long as you cannot forget your son's pain, I cannot forget my tail. There cannot be peace or friendship between us. The woodcutter understood and went away. The Sly Tortoise Once a hungry tortoise found out that some birds were preparing for a great feast up the high wall outside the forest. So he gathered feathers and stuck them to his body. The birds did not recognize him and asked, You have the most unique feathers. Who are you? The sly tortoise replied, My name is all of us. Help me fly with you. The birds carried the tortoise to their feast. Seeing the food, the tortoise asked, Who will eat all this food? The birds replied, all of us. The tortoise ate all the food, saying, That would be me. The angry birds pegged till all his feathers fell off and left him on the high wall. The tortoise requested, Tell my wife to lay out mattresses so that I may land safely. However, the birds told his wife to bring out the furniture. When the tortoise jumped, he fell on the wooden furniture and broke his shell. The Handsome Stag Once a stag was drinking water at a forest pool. He saw himself in the clear water. How handsome I am, he thought. My antlers branch from my head like young trees. My coat is smooth and glossy. My eyes sparkle like stars. I only wish 
that my legs were sharper. They are so long and thin. I am ashamed of them. Just then, the stag heard the sound of a huntsman's horn. He dashed away through the forest, his long thin legs bearing him swiftly. The forest grew thicker, and suddenly his great spreading antlers got caught in the branches of a tree and held him there. He struggled to escape, but his antlers held him fast. He was able to break away only when the huntsman and the hounds were very near. How foolish I have been, thought the stag. My splendid horns are the cause of trouble, while my thin legs have saved my life. A lesson to an elephant. A lark had built her nest on a large tree. One day, an elephant shook the branches of that tree, making the lark's eggs fall and break. The poor lark went to a wasp and requested, "Will you please help me teach the elephant a lesson?" The wasp agreed. He gathered a swarm of wasps and they attacked the elephant. They stung his eyes. Now the elephant could not see through his swollen eyes. The lark now went to a toad and said, "I need your help to teach the elephant a lesson. Go to the deep end of the river and croak loudly. The elephant will follow your voice and will fall into the deep river." The toad agreed. He went to the river and croaked loudly. The elephant was very thirsty. He heard the voice of the toad and followed it. Soon he fell into the river and was rescued after many hours. He never troubled innocent animals again. The jackal's mark. One day, a hungry jackal saw a little girl sitting up in a tree. Come down, my child, and I will carry you home on my back," said the jackal. "I am a sun child. I don't ride on a jackal's back," said the girl. However, the jackal coaxed in such a sweet manner that at last she climbed down and sat on his back. Although she was small and light, yet the jackal began to feel uncomfortable. This was due to the remarkable heat of the sun child. Jump down, he said. However, she refused. Jump down, jump down, pleaded the jackal, just as his fur was beginning to burn. Still, she refused. The jackal could stand no more and with a howl leaped into a dense bush and the little sun child was swept away from his back then burnt and sorry the jackal ran away into the forest carrying with him the mark of the sun child the croak of a frog a little frog never listened to what his mother told him his mother had grown very old but she was still worried about her son's future one day she became very ill she said son i shall not live much longer when i die do not bury me on the mountain i want to be buried by the river she said so to make sure that he remained by the river soon afterwards she died the frog was very sad and wept bitterly he decided from now onwards i will do as my mother would have wanted me to do so he buried her by the river side but whenever the clouds gathered and dropped the water on the river he worried what if mother's grave would be washed away so he sat by the river and cried when it rained and still to this day the frog 
croaks whenever it rains. The clever quail, a hungry jackal, saw a fat quail in the forest while hunting. He came up with a plan and said to the quail, "My old father used to say that a quail usually sings better than other quails if she closes her eyes." The quail believed the jackal and closed her eyes and sang a song. At that moment, the jackal jumped and caught the quail. Then she understood that the jackal had tricked her. She quickly thought of a plan and said, "My dear friend, as you see, it is my fate that you eat me. It was my father's advice that when a quail is eaten, prayers are to be recited. If not, the quail would not be digested well. Now you should first read prayers, then eat me." If you want me to be digested properly, the foolish jackal opened his mouth to read prayers, and the clever quail flew away quickly. The doe swan. A doe went down and brought water and grass for her fawns every day. Every time she left the house she warned that when she came back she would say open the door my children i brought you grass on the horn and water in the mouth one day a wolf hid and watched how the door spoke after she had left he came out and spoke with the voice of the door the fawns thought it was their mother and opened the door The wolf swallowed the fawn and ran away. When the dog came back, she saw nobody at home. As she was crying, another fawn came out from his hiding place. When the dog asked about his brother, the fawn told her everything. The dog went to the wolf and said, "I challenge you." Then they came to a field and fought. The dog cut the wolf's tummy. and her phone came out they returned home happily the crocodile skin long ago the crocodile had a smooth golden skin he would spend all day in the muddy waters and only come out at night all the other animals would come and admire his beautiful golden skin gradually The crocodile became very proud of his skin and started coming out of the water to bask in the other animals' admiration even while the sun was shining. He began thinking he was better than the other animals and started bullying them. The other animals became angry with his change in attitude. Slowly, fewer and fewer animals came to look at his skin but each day as the crocodile exposed his skin to the sun it became uglier bumpier and thicker soon it was transformed into what looked like a bulging armor the crocodile never recovered from the shame even today he disappears from the view when others approach with only his eyes and nostrils above the surface of the water the heron's bent neck one day a jackal was hunting among some rocks near a lake he noticed that a heron was busy looking for frogs in the lake after a while the heron came near the bank of the lake What a long neck you have," flattered the jackal. "What happens when the wind blows? Doesn't it break in half?" "No, I lower it a little," said the heron. "And when the wind blows harder, then I lower it a little more," said the heron. And she bent her neck. And when it blows a real gale, I lower it. Right down to here," 
said the silly boat, lowering her head right down to the bank's edge. The jackal jumped up and grabbed the heron's neck with such force that it bent. The heron was so frightened that she immediately flew away. From that day on, the heron has a bend in her neck. The greedy lion. Once there lived a strong lion in a thick jungle. One day he was feeling very hungry. He came out of his den and started looking for prey. After searching for a long time, the lion saw a small hare. He caught the hare, thinking, "This hare cannot satisfy my hunger, but something is better than nothing." Just as the lion was about to kill the hare, a deer ran in front of him. The lion became greedy and thought, "Instead of eating this small hare, let me try to catch that big deer." He let the hare go and went behind the deer. But the deer ran too fast and vanished into the forest. The lion was shocked. He looked all around, but the deer could not be found. The lion regretted for being greedy and letting go of the food he had. His greed left him hungry and disappointed. Adventurous May, a swallow couple was moving their nest along with their hatchlings one day. They had told their children to stay together and not to stray. But the youngest hatchling, May, was very adventurous. She had just learned to fly and got distracted easily. May looked all around her while flying. She always stayed behind. to notice flowers and insects the parent swallows had warned me to stay with them however as they all started flying me stopped again and again to admire beautiful things soon she realized that she was lost me searched but couldn't find her parents she cried regretting that she didn't listen to her parents With a glint of hope, me started flying again and called out to her parents. A parrot family saw the stranded swallow and tried to help her. Soon they found the swallow family. Me apologized for not listening to her parents and thanked the parrots for the timely help. The missing tail feather Once the bee found realized that one of his tail feathers was missing so he called the best detectives in the forest the fox and the monkey the fox was cleverer and wiser than the monkey he followed the clues to find the missing tail feather it led him to the deepest of the forest where he found a snake but he was hesitant to ask for help So he said nothing to the snake and carried on looking for the missing feather. The monkey was Gregorius and happy detective. He entered the deep forest and found the same snake. He asked the snake, "Have you seen a pea fowl's feather?" The snake was all too pleased to lead the monkey to the missing feather. The pea fowl had dropped it while dancing in the rain. So the monkey returned the feather and collected his reward. The fox realized he could have asked for help instead of being overconfident. The clever woodcutter. Long ago, a stripless tiger saw a woodcutter sleeping near his bullock cart. The tiger crept quietly and whispered to the bullock, "Your master is not strong, yet he makes you work for him. So how does he do it?" The bullock answered, "Why don't you ask him?" The tiger sprang over to the woodcutter and asked, "I have heard 
that the source of man's power is something called wisdom. The terrified woodcutter replied, I will gladly go and fetch wisdom for you, but I cannot leave a hungry tiger with my bullock. So will you let me tie you to this tree? The tiger agreed. A little later, the clever woodcutter returned with straw and lighted a torch. He laid straw beneath the tiger and set it on fire. The tiger roared until the fire burned the ropes. Then he ran to the river where he soothed his burnt fur. However, his skin had orange and black stripes forever. The Ants and the Worms The Queen of Beasts had invited all the animals, birds and insects to a great feast. During the feast, the King of Ants got up and said, My people are stronger than any of you. Not even the elephant can stand before us. He also insulted the worms, saying that he disliked them very much. They are just poor wriggling things, he said. The worms were very angry and complained. So the Queen of Peace said, The best way to decide who the stronger is to fight the matter out. So the next day, the ants left their nest in thousands and marched in a line. The worms also came. The fight was over in a few minutes. As the worms were bitten in pieces by the sharp pincer-like mouths of the ants, the few worms who survived swarmed away and buried themselves out of sight. Ever since, worms have always been afraid and had lived underground. Trust your instinct. An eagle king's prime minister was a parrot. One day, the parrot was late for work. The eagle asked him, What is the matter? The parrot replied, A hunter has set up a net near my nest. Already, a crane and his family have been trapped in the net. I am thinking of making a new nest farther away. But if I do that, I will have to resign as prime minister as I cannot fly so far every day. The eagle did not want to lose a good prime minister, so he suggested, You should just be a little careful. I am sure nothing will happen. The parrot agreed. However, the very next day, he almost got caught in the hunter's net. He thought, I should have trusted my own instinct. By doing what the eagle asked me to do, I almost lost my life. Then the parrot left and built a new nest far away. The Impulsive Hare Once the moon pulled on her friend, the spider, and said, The animals of the earth are scared. Please tell them that they need not be afraid of dying. The spider slowly made his way to the earth. He met a hare on the way who said, O oh spider, you are too slow. Tell me the moon's message and I'll take it to the earth faster. The spider started. The moon wants the animals of the earth to know that they will all die. The hare did not wait to hear the rest and said, All right. I have to tell the animals of the earth that they will all die. He ran towards the earth. The spider told the moon what had happened. The moon was very angry with the hare for giving the wrong message. When the hare came back, the moon hit him on the nose. That is why to this day the hare has a split lip. The Hunter and the Turtle Long ago, turtles used to live both on land and in water. A hunter once caught a turtle. He took the turtle home and asked his wife to cook him for dinner. The turtle said, 
you cannot cook me unless you take me out of my shell and the shell is the hardest part of my body the hunter said we will break your shell with sticks the clever turtle said that will not help at all why don't you dip me into the sea and loosen up the shell instead the hunter and his wife took the turtle to the sea they threw him into the water and waited however the turtle swam away and shocked both of them the turtle teasingly said i fooled both of you i can actually swim very well in the water i think i will spend the rest of my life in water safe from hunters the kind birch tree a deer and a doe were looking for a place to build their house they requested a peach tree can we build a house under your branches i will soon give birth to a fawn the peach tree said but my fruits may fall on your fawn and hurt it they then went to a walnut tree and asked for his help the walnut tree said no my nuts will hurt your fawn just then they saw a fir tree and asked for his permission the fir tree said my cones may injure your fawn so you had better look for a safer place they finally went to a birch tree and made the same request the kind birch tree said of course you can build a house here my branches will protect your fawn from the sun rain and wind the deer and the doe thanked the birch tree and built their house there they soon became the proud parents of a beautiful fawn the savior bear two sisters lived near a forest one day as they were collecting firewood in the forest some tribal people came charging towards them the frightened sisters ran deep into the forest they finally found a place to hide in the hollow bark of a tree after a while a bear walked towards the tree he just stood calmly and gestured to the sisters to come out The sisters were confused and frightened but they listened to the bear anyway the bear then led the two sisters to a cave near a river he even brought food and water and protected them the entire night the next morning the bear led the two sisters safely back to their village just as the two sisters turned to thank the bear he disappeared into thin air No one ever saw the bear again. It is said that even today bear protects innocent people who are in trouble in the forest. The cunning fox's trick. A group of people was camping in a forest. By evening they suddenly realized that they had no food left for dinner. A man said I will bring some fresh meat. We can make a bonfire and roast it. He took a club and went to the lake thinking that animals would come to drink water. He lay on the ground and pretended to be dead. After some time, some foxes came to the lake. The fox chief said, "I will check if this man is pretending to be dead." So the fox pulled the man's club cautiously. The man pulled back his club at once and quickly threw his club at the fox. Unfortunately, he missed his aim. He looked for the other foxes, but everybody had run far away. The man thought, "I tried to play a trick on the animals, but the cunning fox played a better trick on me." Trust your parents. A lion king wanted his son to learn good skills and be a good ruler when he grew up. So he decided to send him to the wise ape. However, the cub pleaded, "Father, I do not want to leave this comfortable life and go." 
the lion replied son you must be well trained it will help you to rule the kingdom well unwillingly the cub left his family and stayed with the wise ape in another forest there he learned many skills and tricks 5 years later an enemy tribe of lions attacked the lion king's forest a message was sent for the cub the well trained cub came back to help his father he fought bravely and defeated the enemies the proud lion hugged him with tears in his eyes he said well done son but never misunderstand your parents parents have to take tough decisions for their children's good the cub apologized to his father for mistaking his motive the golden bell a thief stole a golden bell from the king's palace and ran into the forest to hide there a tiger saw him hiding behind a tree and pounced on him some monkeys found the bell and started playing with it a woodcutter found the thief's body and thought a monster living in the forest has killed him and is ringing the bell he will surely kill us all he spread the word and people started fleeing the kingdom the king was very worried but a hunter came to him and said your majesty i will find the monster and kill him the clever hunter took some fruits and water before leaving for the forest he saw the monkeys playing with the bell and offered the fruits to them the monkeys dropped the bell and started eating the fruits the hunter picked the golden bell up and went back the king rewarded him handsomely for his bravery the fox and the goat on a hot sunny day a thirsty fox was searching for water he saw a big well nearby and peeped into it suddenly he slipped and fell into the well he tried his best to come out but could not just then a thirsty goat also came to the well he looked down and was surprised to see the fox in the water what are you doing down there asked the goat the fox replied that he was enjoying the cool and sweet water he invited the goat to come in and taste it the goat believed the fox he could not understand the real motive of the fox behind it so the foolish goat thoughtlessly jumped into the water the cunning fox at once climbed up on the goat's back and came out of the well easily the fox ran away from that place before the poor goat could realize that he had been fooled the town mouse and the country mouse a town mouse and a country mouse were friends one day the country mouse invited his friend to his home for dinner the town mouse did not like the roots and vegetables that he was offered and said dear friend you should come with me i promise you that you will enjoy the food we get in town the country mouse went along with the town mouse the town mouse took his friend to the pantry where he lived it was full of delicious food flour oatmeal figs and so many other things the country mouse immediately sat down to enjoy the delicacies but soon someone or the other would come in to take out food or keep more food there the mice had to hide time and again the country mouse got irritated and said i cannot live in such a place you may have many delicacies but i am happy in my country side i enjoy my simple dinner without anyone disturbing me so goodbye the elephant and his friends one day an elephant wandered into the forest in search of friends he saw a monkey on a tree and asked will you be my friend the monkey replied no 
you are too big and cannot swing on trees. Next, the elephant met a rabbit, but the rabbit also refused and said, "No, you cannot play in the burrow with me." Slowly, all the animals in the jungle refused to be friends with the elephant. Next day, the elephant saw all the animals running for their lives. He asked them why they were running. A bear replied, "There is a tiger in the forest. He will eat all of us." The elephant walked up to the tiger and said, "Please do not eat up those poor animals." But the tiger growled and refused. The elephant got angry and gave the tiger a hard kick. The frightened tiger ran for his life. All the animals thanked the elephant and became his friends. The hungry wolf. Once there was a very hungry wolf. It looked for food here and there, but could not get any. The wolf started getting very restless. At last, it found a big loaf of bread, a large piece of meat, and a few smoked fishes in the hole of a tree. The hungry wolf became very happy. It squeezed into the hole and ate all the food. It was a woodcutter's lunch that the wolf ate. The woodcutter was on his way. Back to the tree to have his meal. When he saw that there was a wolf inside the hole, on seeing the woodcutter, the wolf got scared and tried to get out of the hole. But all its efforts went to waste, and the wolf could not get out of the hole, since its tummy was swollen with all the food that it had eaten. The woodcutter caught the wolf and gave it a nice thrashing. The eagle and the crow. One day, a crow was sitting on a tree in a grassland. A flock of sheep was grazing in that grassland. After a while, the crow saw an eagle flying high in the sky. He noticed that the eagle dived down from the sky and grabbed a lamb with his claws. The eagle took the lamb with him to his nest located high over a tree top. The crow thought. of imitating the eagle so he flew towards another lamb and tried to catch it with his claws but the lamb was too heavy the crow was shocked as his little claws got caught and trapped in the lamb's thick fur he tried hard to get off the lamb but could not his claws were totally entangled in the lamb's thick fur a shepherd saw the crow he caught the crow and put it in a cage the crow became the laughing stock for every passerby the timid lamb once upon a time there was a lamb she never went out of her house because she was always scared that her wool would be sheared her parents were forever cheering her up saying that she should not be so scared one day when her parents insisted She went out for some time to the park. She enjoyed the fresh air and felt very good. Suddenly, she heard a feeble voice, "Help!" This time, she wasn't scared, but started looking for the source of that voice. She saw a rabbit crouching under a bush. He was injured and seemed scared. He told the lamb how he fell into a hunter's trap and then managed to escape from there. The kind lamb took the rabbit to her home. They became very good friends thereafter. After being able to help someone else who was scared, she herself was not scared anymore. The brave frog. Once upon a time, there lived a little frog near a pond in a beautiful garden. She used to croak every day until midday and then she would go out looking for food. One morning as she was clearing her throat to sing her song as she always did a big storm came and then the rain started. Hours passed by but the rain did not stop. The frog needed to go out to look for some food but she could not do so. She decided not to give up so easily. 
she came up with a plan to come out of this difficult situation. First, she collected the fallen leaves from under the tree. Then, she wove them together, making a little boat. In this manner, she went rowing through the water in the garden, searching for her usual food, carefully and with confidence. The Horse and the Stag Once a wild horse was grazing on a grassland and enjoying its food. After some time, it saw a stag come and nibble in the same grassland. There was enough grass for both of them. But the horse did not want to share it and thought of a plan to get rid of the stag. It saw a man passing by. The horse asked the man to help him kill the stag. The man agreed but said that he would have to mount the horse in order to chase the stag. The horse agreed and very soon the man killed the stag. Now the man refused to get off. The horse began to kick and fling but all it got was a good whipping. At last it had no alternative but to give in to the man and work for him on his farm. The Lost Tree Once there lived a squirrel under a big green tree. It was beginning to turn cold, so she started burying nuts under the tree. When all the nuts were buried under the big green tree, the squirrel decided to take a vacation. After two weeks, when she returned, the squirrel could not find her big green tree. She got worried. Next morning, the squirrel started her search again. She was very hungry and was desperately searching for some food. Suddenly, she met her friend, the frog, and told him the whole story. The frog asked her, Where did you bury the nuts? The squirrel replied, Under the big green tree. But now, there is a big yellow tree. My green tree has gone. The frog said, Do you know that leaves change color in autumn? Your green tree has become yellow. When the squirrel looked for her buried nuts, she found them under the big yellow tree. She happily dug them all up. The Cock and the Pearl A cock was once strutting up and down in a farmyard. Suddenly, he saw something shining on the ground. Oh, said the cock, what is this shiny little thing? The shining thing was a pearl. The cock stared at the pearl closely. He pecked at it and scratched it a couple of times. The pearl rolled a few inches away from the cock's foot and landed next to some barley grains that the hens had missed. The cock went to gobble up those barley grains, but his foot slipped on the pearl. The cock turned around to look at the strange looking seed again. He eyed the pearl suspiciously. Upon pecking again, it did not break open. The cock gave a cluck of disgust. He said, You may be a treasure for mankind, but for me, I would rather have the grains of barley. The Foolish Wolf Once a watchdog was lying in the sun in front of a farmyard gate. A wolf who was passing by stealthily pounced upon the watchdog. The scared dog begged for his life and said, Sir, please leave me as I have just recovered from a long illness. I am very thin and weak. Let me become fat after feeding on the rich food that I get here. Then you can come and eat me. The wolf believed the dog's words and went away. The dog thanked God and decided not to sleep in an unsafe place again. After a few days, the wolf came to the farm again looking for the dog. This time, the dog was lying very safely on the roof. On seeing the dog, the wolf said, Hope you remember your promise. So come down and be my meal. The dog said, Who makes such promises? Get lost, Mr. Wolf. The wolf went away, repenting over his foolishness. 
द ब्रेव बर्ड अ गैनेट एंड अ सी डक वो आर्ग्यूइंग ओवर वेदर मोमेड एक्सिस्ट और नॉट दे डिसाइडेड टू सर्च द बॉटम ऑफ द सी दे डाइव डीप डाउन अंडर द सी फर्स्ट दे सर्व कलरफुल फिश देन मीडियम साइज फिश एंड देन लार्ज फिश सोन दे डाइव सो डीप इन द सी दैट दे कुड नॉट सी एनी थिंग ड्यू टू द डार्कनेस बोथ द बर्ड्स गॉट टेरिबली स्केर्ड and immediately returned to the surface the duck decided to carry torch in the next trip the two birds started their journey again when they reached deep into the sea they switched on their torch when the dark sea was lit up they saw that they were surrounded by mermaids the mermaids told them that they thought the gannet and the duck were scared because last time they left so quickly but when they returned The mermaids became very happy. They congratulated them on their bravery. At last, the canid and the duck became great friends with the mermaids. The elephant's long trunk. Many years ago, elephants had small trunks. One day, an elephant saw a crocodile lying down on a river bank. The elephant said, "Hey, you crawling creature!" I wonder why you are not small like other creatures. You are too long for your own comfort. The crocodile lost his temper and said, "Wait, I will show you how strong a crawling creature can be." Immediately, the crocodile caught the elephant's trunk in his mouth. The elephant cried out in pain and tried to pull out his trunk from the jaws of the crocodile, but the crocodile held on to it with his sharp teeth so the other animals heard the elephant's cries and came to his rescue they pulled the elephant by his tail which caused the trunk to be stretched long the elephant became very sad upon seeing his stretched out long trunk but the animals told him that now he could reach the higher branches of the trees to eat leaves and fruits Finally the elephant felt happy again Dr Croaky one day a lame frog left the pond of a village and hopped away to a lake in a nearby forest he wanted to make a new home but when the frog reached the forest he did not see anyone around now How would he get to meet the animals and make friends? Suddenly he got an idea. He climbed up on a high rock by the lake and announced, "Friends, please come here. I am new in the forest. I want to meet all of you." Many animals heard the frog's croak and came to the lake. The frog said, "Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Croaky. I am a doctor who can cure any ailment." that you might be suffering from i have medicines for all the diseases hearing this the jackal said if you can cure everyone then why have you not cured your legs see how you keep limping around all the animals and the birds laughed at the frog the frog turned red with shame his lie had been found out the fox and the snake Once there was a fox who lived in the deepest part of the forest. One fine morning, when the fox was roaming around the forest, he saw a huge, thick and long snake enjoying the sun. His long body stretched from one corner of the path to the other. The fox was very impressed by the big size of the snake. He thought, "It's such a large snake. If I try to imitate him, I will surely become as long and as mighty as the snake i must try this at once so the fox lay down on the path by the snake's side and started stretching his body he tried hard but his bones and muscles ached yet he did not grow long enough at last he stretched so hard that many of his bones made a crackling sound and broke at once the poor fox did not know that one should not compare oneself with others who are stronger 
or larger than oneself. The Boot in the Jungle Deep in the jungle, where no man went, there lived many wild animals. One day, they came across a strange object. It was a man's boot. They had never seen such a thing before. All the animals started discussing about the strange object. I am sure it's the shell of a fruit, said the bear. Can't you see that it is a nest? There is a hollow in which the bird can lay its eggs, said the wolf. How can you be so foolish, said the goat. Look here, these are roots, so obviously it is a plant. A duck was listening to their argument. It said, I have been to a land where many men live, and this thing you see is called a boot. Men wear such things on their feet. You keep out of this, said all the animals. We have seen no such thing, so we cannot believe you. The duck said, Believe what you want to, but remember that you can't know everything. The Value of a Family Once there was a deer who lived with his family, but he was not happy living with them. One day he decided to move to another place where he could be away from his family and feel happy. And he left his home. After a long walk, the deer met a goat on the way. They both became good friends and went to look for some fresh grass. But there were two wolves observing them from behind a rock. The wolves were wondering whether the goat's meat was delicious or the deer's. Suddenly, the deer heard a noise and said, I think somebody is watching us. But the goat did not respond. Suddenly, the deer spotted the wolves and screamed at her. Run, my friend, we are in danger. They both began to run, leaving the hungry wolves far behind. After this dangerous encounter, the deer realized that he should go back home. A home is the safest place to live peacefully. And he also understood the value of a family. The Bat, the Birds and the Beasts Once there was a bat who lived in a jungle. One day, a big fight was about to take place between the birds and the beasts of the jungle. The bat was not willing to join any of the groups. When the birds asked him to join them, he said, I cannot join you because I am a beast. Later, when some beasts asked him to join them, he said, I am a bird. How can I join you? Luckily, at the last moment, peace prevailed and no battle took place. So the bat asked the birds if he could join their group. But all the birds turned against him and the bat had to fly away. He then went to the beasts to join them. But all the beasts also turned against him and started hitting him. So, to save his life, the bat ran away from that place as quickly as possible and took shelter in a deep dark cave. He still lives there. The Missing Tail Once upon a time, there was a baby lizard who lived in between the rocks in a jungle with his family. The baby lizard loved to lie down under the sun for hours. One day, when the baby lizard was relaxing under the sun, he noticed that he had lost his tail. He started crying. His mother heard him crying and came out. The mother lizard said, Baby, maybe it is time for you to get a new look. The baby lizard got even more confused. He thought that his mother wanted him to find a new tail. So he set off to find one. Days and months passed. The baby lizard kept looking for a new tail but could not find any. He was very disappointed and went back home. He started crying again in front of mother lizard. But his mother, instead of consoling him, 
was laughing. She asked him to turn around and look at his tail. And guess what? The baby lizard had a new tail. His tail had grown back. Three fishes. Three fishes lived together in a lake. The first fish was very lazy. The second was a little wise and tended to make some good decisions. The third one was an intelligent fish. It usually thought a lot and made decisions wisely. One day, the third fish heard two fishermen talk about fishing in their lake. She shared everything with the other two fishes. The second fish said, We can think about it tomorrow. The first fish said, Oh, let us just ignore it. Both the fish refused to accompany the third fish. So the third fish moved to nearby lake alone. Next day, the two fishermen arrived. The second fish saw them fishing and planned to escape. As she was caught in the fishing net, she pretended to be dead. The fisherman threw it back into the lake and so the second one also escaped. But the first fish was caught and lost her life. First act and then tell. One day, a mother crab and a baby crab were walking on the beach. Watching him walk sideways, the mother crab asked her son, why do you walk sideways like that? You should always walk straight ahead with your toes turned out. Please teach me how to walk in a straightforward manner with toes turned out, mother, requested the little crab obediently. So the mother crab tried to walk in a straightforward manner, but try as she might, she could not do so. Instead, she was also walking sideways just like her son. After that, the mother crab tried to turn out her toes, but to her shock, she tripped and fell on her face. The father crab was watching all this from a distance. On seeing this, he had a hearty laugh and told the mother crab, Do not tell others how to act unless you can set a good example yourself. The Big Mouth Fox A reindeer and a fox were great friends. One day, the reindeer found a bucket full of fruits under a big banyan tree in the forest. He decided to keep it a secret. He shared this secret with the fox and told him not to share it with anybody else. But the fox told the secret to all the animals of the forest. Next day, when the reindeer went to the secret place, to eat the fruits, he discovered that all the fruits had been eaten. The reindeer realized that the fox had cheated him. So, he thought of a plan to teach the fox a lesson. That same day, he told the fox that there was a lake full of fish in the middle of the forest. The fox again told everyone in the forest about this. All the animals searched for the lake but there was no such lake. The animals got very angry for their wasted effort and thrashed the big mouth fox for his lie. Lola the Whale Lola was a very big whale. She always lived alone in the ocean. She appeared quite shy and aloof and had no friends. Whenever Anyone tried to get close to her and cheer her up, Lola would go away. Due to this behavior of hers, no one liked to come close to her. But old Durga, a hundred-year-old sea turtle, told everyone that Lola was a good whale. She was friendly once but had changed over time. One day, Dido, a dolphin, heard about Lola and decided to follow her secretly. She found out that Lola had terribly bad breath because a little fish had got trapped in a corner of her mouth. This problem embarrassed Lola so much that she did not dare to speak to anyone. Dido talked to Lola and convinced Lola 
to take her help. Dido removed the remains of the fish from Lola's mouth. When the bad breath was gone, Lola was no longer embarrassed. Soon, Lola became friends with all the animals in the ocean. The Mocking Tiger Once there lived a clever, strong tiger in a forest. He always made fun of other animals. He especially mocked the elephant by calling him slow and clumsy. One day, all the animals were holding a meeting in a cave near a mountain. Suddenly, there was a storm and a huge tree fell in front of the cave, blocking its entrance. Everyone expected that the strong, clever tiger would easily help them to get out. But unfortunately, the tiger could not move the huge tree. Finally, a bumblebee escaped through a tiny gap between the rocks. She flew off in search of the elephant who had not come for the meeting because he was feeling sad. When the elephant heard of the problem, he immediately came to help. He moved the tree away from the entrance of the cave, setting the animals free. The animals congratulated both the elephant and the bumblebee. That day, the tiger learned his lesson and never mocked any animal again. Route to be an ant In a big colony of ants, there was a small ant who always dreamt of being a ladybird or a beetle. One day, she was fed up of being a tiny, helpless ant. She thought that the rules for the ants were very strict. On one windy day, she grabbed and held onto a big leaf that came flying past. She sat on it and flew high in the air. When she was flying high in the sky, she saw no sign of any beetle or ladybird nests. But one thing which she could clearly see was a big ant hill. The ant hill was strong enough to withstand the windy weather. The ant hill was visible from a great distance too. The tiny ant realized the power of teamwork that an ant army had. She also realized that ant hills constructed by ants were very strong. So finally, she felt very proud to be an ant. The Special Cow Once upon a time, there was a special cow in a village. This cow produced coffee-flavored milk instead of plain milk. One day, a cafe owner from a big city visited the village. He came to know about this special cow and got very impressed. The cafe owner convinced the cow owner to sell his special cow to him. When he reached home with this special cow, his wife advised him to return the cow to the village. She felt that the cow, being a village cow, would not be able to survive in city conditions. But the man ignored his wife's advice. Within a few days, the cafe became very popular. But gradually, the taste of the coffee-flavored milk changed. It started tasting less sweet and less creamy. Soon, the cafe started losing its customers. The cafe owner realized his mistake and understood that the cow missed its village. Soon, one day, he finally took the special cow back to its village. The Magical Teeth Long, long ago, there was a lizard. He invented a magical set of teeth. He thought of fixing those teeth on one of his toads. After the magical teeth were fixed, the toad became a happy and smiling amphibian. He ate everything and started speaking too. Once, the lizard noticed that the toad was getting fond of eating candies. I am enjoying these candies a lot, said the toad merrily. Look after your teeth, Mr. Toad. Brush them and keep them clean so that they may stay cavity free. Too many sweets will spoil your teeth. The lizard kept instructing the toad. But the toad did not pay any attention. Gradually, the toad's teeth started decaying. 
he discovered to his shock that there were holes in his teeth then the poor toad's teeth started falling off and soon the toad lost all his teeth and also the ability to talk poor mr toad if he had kept his teeth clean he would not have lost them the colorful animal planet several years ago there existed an animal planet on this planet each kind of animal lived in its own special land the orange elephant lived on the orange land the blue crocodiles lived on the blue land and so on one day on the land of the orange elephants a baby elephant came running towards the other elephants he seemed quite horrified he said that he had seen some purple animals at the border of their land none believed the baby elephant so he asked them to follow him to the border when they reached the border they saw a different colored land it was purple land full of purple animals the purple animals were equally amazed too upon meeting one another the orange and the purple animals decided to search for other colored animals when all the animals were finally at one place heavy rain began pouring the rain mixed up all the animals colors leaving each one with the color it has today the lion without a roar once there was a lion who could not roar at all he was unable to roar since birth there was no one who could teach him or tell him that lions always roar so he learned to talk softly with everyone once the lion was very annoyed with a pig he wanted to roar at the pig but was unable to do so the lion then invented a roaring machine one day the lion saw the same pig again The lion thought of using his roaring machine. His roaring machine sent out a truly terrifying roar. Roar! All the animals in the forest got scared and none dared to go near him. The lion became lonely and sad. He decided not to use that machine again. Slowly, using the kind and cordial tone of his voice, the lion managed to restore the animal's trust in him he realized that one could convey any message by speaking softly to and that there was no need to roar ice in the jungle early one morning a huge block of ice appeared in the middle of the jungle it was as tall as tree and as huge as an elephant it was extremely cold all the animals thought it had some treasure inside it a huge hula balloon was created the king of the jungle the lion announced that whoever could get the treasure out from this huge object would succeed him as the next king as soon as the king announced this a race began among the animals all of them wanted to try their luck All the animals tried to break the block forcefully but they could only chip out pieces from it. They soon noticed that the size of the ice block was reducing. A rabbit picked some pieces of the ice up. They had broken off the block. They melted soon in his hand and turned into water. The rabbit then told the animals that it was not any treasure but just a huge block of ice. Laughing aloud, the rabbit said, "Before leaping blindly at the problem, we should have taken some time to observe it." The selfish baboon. Long ago, it was so hot that water was found only in a few small ponds throughout the forest. A baboon lived near one such pond. He chased away all the animals. saying nobody is allowed to drink water from this pond this water belongs to me he also lit a fire 
close to the pond so that he might protect his water during the cold nights. One day, a zebra came to the pond. Back then, zebras only had beautiful white coats. The selfish baboon said to the zebra, Look, if you want the water, you will have to fight with me. The zebra kicked the baboon and he flew high up into the rocks. The zebra had kicked so hard that he himself lost the balance and fell into the fire. The burning sticks fell on his beautiful white coat, creating black stripes all over his body. The baboon fell with a loud thud on his buttocks and got a red bottom forever. Fight in the sea. Once upon a time, dolphins, whales, and many other small, colorful fish lived in the sea. The dolphins and the small fish were very good friends. One day, the whales started harming the small fish. This made the dolphins angry and they started fighting with the whales. It looked as if the fight would never end. The fight was at its peak when suddenly a sprat lifted its head out of the sea and said, I will solve the matter if all of you accept me as your king. One of the dolphins was very wise. She understood that the sprat was taking advantage of the fight between the whales and the dolphins. She replied, Even if we get killed in our fight with one another, we will not let anybody interfere in our matter. The sprat's idea of ruling over them failed. Now all of them understood that the interference of a third person would be harmful for everyone and they called off the fight. The Shaking Scale One day, a zebra found a bathroom scale. He was quite amused to see it. He asked his friend, the parrot, about it. The parrot knew about the bathroom scale. He explained the working of the scale to the zebra. Immediately, the zebra stood on the weighing scale to weigh himself. It became a fun activity for him. But soon the zebra became very obsessed about his weight. He started getting annoyed with the scale when he noticed that the scale showed increased reading for his weight. He would then start kicking the scale. The scale got irritated. Next morning, the zebra came to weigh himself again. However, as soon as the zebra stepped onto the scale, it began shaking and the zebra fell down. Every time the zebra got onto the scale, it would shake him off and the zebra would fall off and hurt himself. Soon he decided not to kick the scale and got over his obsession about his weight too. Who is the more superior? It was a hot summer day. An ant and a fly were bitterly arguing about who was the more superior. A rabbit who was sitting in his burrow observed them peacefully. First, the fly said proudly, Hey ant, I am superior to you. I can fly. I can go into temples and freely taste the offerings there. On the other hand, you have to work hard to get food. So you see, I have a better life. It was the ant's turn now. She replied, Do not be so proud, my dear fly. You are always hated when you enter temples. You are driven away as soon as you sit on anyone. I work hard and gather plenty of grain for winter. Later on, when you shiver in the cold, I am safe in my comfortable home. The rabbit came out from his burrow and said, Mr. Fly, remember, before finding fault with others, first look at your own faults. Thurston the Elephant Long ago, there lived a herd of elephants in a valley. Every spring, they would leave their valley by the mountains and travel west to the big blue sea. In winters, they would return home to the valley. The oldest elephant, Ujulon, 
would often speak about the adventures of Thurston, who was a small elephant. One day, Thurston was crossing a large grassy field when he heard the sounds of a fight and a cry for help. When he went close, he saw a brood of little red scorpions attacking a big brown ant. Thurston did not really care for the scorpions and he rushed, charging and trumpeting, scaring all the scorpions away. When he went closer to the big black ant, Thurston could see that she was severely injured. He placed the ant on a big leaf and poured some drops of water over it. Slowly, the ant started moving. She thanked Thurston for his help and he left the place happily. Like this, Thurston would continue to help small creatures. How Crows Became Black Several years ago, there lived a crow that was white in color. An owl who owned a dye shop lived in his neighborhood. The various colors that the owl used always fascinated the crow. One day, the crow asked the owl, Can you color my body pink? The owl said, Yes, my dear friend. And he asked the crow to come the next day. The owl had poor eyesight. While mixing the colors for the crow, he poured black color instead of pink. He told the crow, Your color is ready. Just dive into that pool of color. The crow immediately dived in. But when he emerged, he saw that he was dark in color. He got very angry and called at the owl. Why have you made me black? Wait till I catch you. The frightened owl flew away. Since then, crows are black and owls, out of fright, come out only at night when crows are fast asleep. The Scorpion and the Frog Once upon a time, a scorpion lived in a dark cave near a mountain. He was not happy with his surroundings at all. One day, he came out of his cave and noticed that the valley across the river was very green. Suddenly, he saw a frog leaping around. He asked the frog, Hello, Mr. Frog, would you carry me to the other side of the river? The frog replied, No, I will not. I do not trust scorpions. But the scorpion pleaded, I do not know how to swim. So if I sting you on the way, I will also die. The frog was convinced and carried the scorpion across the river. Halfway through the journey, the scorpion stung the frog. Why did you sting me? Now both of us will die, cried the frog. The shameless scorpion replied, There is nothing I can do. This is my nature. One cannot change one's basic nature. And both of them got drowned in the water. The Parrot and the Guinea Pig Bunny and Muggsy, two dogs, lived in a farm near a forest. One day, Bunny told Muggsy that he met a guinea pig named Bob near their farm. Muggsy wanted to meet him too. So both the dogs went to meet Bob, a small brown-colored guinea pig. The two dogs played with a small red ball with Bob and had lots of fun. Then they walked back to their farm. When they got back home, they found Petty, the parrot, waiting for them. Bunny and Muggsy told him about Bob. Petty asked, Do you think he would play with me? Muggsy said, Yes, why not? Petty took his checkers and rushed to meet Bob. A few minutes later, he came back crying. Bob does not like me. He is not interested in playing with my checkers. Muggsy laughed. Guinea pigs do not play checkers. Try playing with a ball. Petty agreed and eagerly went to meet Bob again with a red ball. This time, he played with the red ball. Hold up the sky Once on a beautiful summer day, an elephant was wandering in the jungle. Suddenly, he stopped. He saw his friend, the hummingbird, 
lying on its back with its tiny feet up in the air. "Hello friend, what are you doing?" asked the elephant. The hummingbird replied, "Hello Mr. Elephant, I heard that the sky was going to fall. So to help, I am ready to hold it up when it falls." The elephant thought about this for a few minutes. Then he laughed aloud and said, "Oh hummingbird, you are the tiniest bird in the world and the sky is so big. Do you really think that those tiny feet could help hold up the sky?" The hummingbird still kept its feet up in the air and was quite determined to do so. It said to the elephant, "Not alone, dear friend, but I am ready to do my part. Each one must do what he can and this is my part the fastest hare there was a small hare living in a burrow in a forest when he was 4 months old he told his mother that he wanted to run very fast as the little hare grew up he still longed to run fast so he prayed to god every night to express his wish Well, one day he started racing with other hares. They ran for a long distance, and one of the other hares came first. The little hare was very disheartened. That night he saw a fire-breathing dragon in his dream, who told him that he could win a race if he really tried hard. Next morning, the little hare got up and challenged the other hares again for a race. This time the little hare tried his hardest. He caught up with the one running ahead of him, hurriedly ran past him and crossed the finishing line. Finally, the little hare had won the race. The little grey donkey. After a long time, a fair came to the jungle. All the animals, big and small, were very happy and excited about the fair. Young animals were enjoying different rides. Shanky, the little grey donkey, also visited the fair. He wanted to enjoy the ride named Columbus. So, he stood at the corner of the ticket window but was barely visible. Thus, he was unable to buy the ticket. The moment Shanky tried to move forward, someone or the other pushed him back. Shanky became very upset. One of his friends, Laura, The mule was observing all that. She understood why Shanky was upset. She went towards Shanky and asked him to bray loudly. Shanky's loud bray would attract the ticket man's attention and the ticket man would give him the ticket. Shanky understood the idea and started braying loudly. The ticket man noticed him. He gave a ticket for the right Columbus to Shanky. Shanky got super excited. He enjoyed the ride very much and thanked Laura. Who is the smarter? One day a wolf and a jackal were fighting with each other. The wolf bragged to the jackal, "Hey jackal, I am more educated than you." The jackal quietly said, "Yes, my friend, you are right, but I am definitely smarter than you." Just then a tiger roared. Nobody is so educated as I am. The wolf froze on seeing the tiger, while the jackal quickly thought of a plan to escape. He said, "Yes, sir, you are. That is the reason we want you to suggest who should have the chickens, me or the wolf." The tiger was greedy. He thought of savoring not only the chickens but also the healthy jackal and the wolf the tiger said show me the chickens first the jackal showed him a small cave sir the chickens are inside the cave as soon as the tiger went inside the clever jackal covered the entrance with a rock the wolf was impressed to see the jackal's move he said i was wrong you are definitely the smarter one Why rabbits are herbivores? Several thousands of years ago, there lived a hunter rabbit named Chuck. 
One day, Chuck saw some big footprints. He followed them and went deep into the forest. But he found nothing. He felt hungry and ate berries. Next morning, Chuck again followed the footsteps but could not find anything. He had to again eat some berries. He was fed up of eating berries. That night, he decided to lay a net for hunting. But to his shock, he discovered a big hole in the net. So he went to meet his magician grandmother. Chuck told her everything. She gave him a magical net that could not be cut. Chuck laid out the net on the pathway. Next morning, Chuck heard a voice. Let me out or else the world will remain dark forever. He went out and saw that he had captured the sun. Chuck quickly freed the sun. But the sun was already so angry and cursed Chuck that he and all the other rabbits would always eat plant food like berries and would never eat any animal food. The Greedy Cat Once in a jungle, there lived a man named Freddy in a small cottage. A cat named Adam often visited Freddy's cottage. Adam was a very greedy cat. Every night, she used to steal Freddy's food. One night, Adam had so much food that her tummy was excessively full. That night, she dreamt of Dodo, Freddy's dog. Dodo was chasing Adam all over the place. She woke up with a pounding heart. Next night, Adam forgot about her dream and stole Freddy's food again. And she again dreamt of Dodo. Now, Adam was very scared. The following night, when Adam tried to steal, she found that Dodo was guarding Freddy's food. That night, Adam could not eat much food. She had to manage with some blackberries. But Adam did not have any bad dream that night. She was very relieved and happy. So, she finally decided not to be greedy anymore. Windy the Lonely Goat Once upon a time, there lived a family of goats in a jungle. There were three members in the family. Windy the little goat, Mr. Tony the father goat and Mrs. Mushy the mother goat. Windy was nice, obedient goat, but he had no friends. He used to remain very silent and sad. One day, Windy went to the river and saw a small goat in water. He bleated joyfully. Would you be my friend? But suddenly, a fish came out of the water and said, You stupid goat, that is your reflection. Windy became sad again. While walking back home, he thought, I am so unlucky and tears welled up in his eyes. When he reached home, his father hugged him tight. Welcome son, see what we have here for you. Windy hurriedly went to the backyard and saw a little white goat lying beside his mother. That's your sister, exclaimed his mother. Windy bleated happily. Now I will never be lonely again. The Oxen and the Pig There were two oxen, Jack and Mac. They worked for Mr. Giant, the wolf. Mr. Giant had other animals working for him too. Once it was Mr. Giant's daughter's wedding. For that occasion, Mr. Giant asked his wife, We need a fat pig for the wedding dinner. So start feeding good, delicious food to Chunky the pig. Chunky started getting good and delicious food. Then onwards, Jack and Mac were observing all this. They knew Mr. Giant's real motive behind it. So they went and told Chunky about Mr. Giant's motive. Chunky got scared after listening to this. He asked Jack and Mac to help him get out of Mr. Giant's house. That night, Jack and Mac broke Chunky's tie with their strong horns. Chunky was free now. He ran happily towards the nearby valley where other fellow pigs lived. Jack and Mac were also happy as they saved their friend Chunky from the wicked Mr. Giant. 
the intelligent mouse. Two mice lived in a cave. There also lived a lion in that cave. Every day, the mice used to feed on the leftovers of the lion's food. One day, they found no leftover food as a jackal had come and had finished it off. This got the mice worried. But the younger one was clever. He said, I have an idea to get rid of the jackal. The mice collected some fish and some gravel and made a pie out of it. They took the pie to the jackal's cave. Smelling the fish, the greedy jackal came out of the cave and ate the pie. But as soon as he finished eating, he had a terrible stomachache and started crying. Upon seeing this, the younger mouse suggested, This food here is stale. You should go to the mountains to get fresh food and air and you will never have this stomachache again. Believing the mouse, the jackal went away. The Wise Old Pelican Once a flock of wild geese lived on a tree in a dense forest. Among the geese was a wise old pelican. But no one liked the pelican as he used to narrate stories with good lessons. One day, when the geese had gone out in search of food, a hunter laid his net there. In the evening, when the geese returned, they found themselves trapped in the net. They cried for help, but there was no one to hear their cries. The wise old pelican said, Tomorrow morning, when the hunter comes, be very still and pretend that you are dead. He will not take dead birds and will throw the net on the ground. When the hunter will throw the net towards the ground, you all should flap your wings together and fly in unity. The geese agreed. Next morning the hunter came early. All the geese did the same, flapped up in the air and flew away. The Peacock's Feathers Many years ago, the peacock was an ordinary bird with a small bunch of feathers. It used to fly high in the sky, although it always wanted to be the most beautiful bird on earth. One day, the peacock visited the wish goddess. It expressed its wish in front of her. The wish goddess smiled and the peacock was blessed with a long train of brightly colored feathers that trailed behind it. The feathers were blue and green in color with a jewel-like pattern. The peacock was also blessed that it could open up the feathers like a fan if it wanted. Now the peacock held its head high and started walking like a king. The common birds looked at him in surprise and were jealous. After showing off its colorful feathers, the peacock decided to fly. But it was shocked. It could not fly anymore. The peacock sadly realized that it had lost a wonderful ability simply because it had wanted to look good. The Greedy Traveler Once there was a smart old tiger. He could no longer hunt as he had grown old. One day when he was terribly hungry, he thought of a plan. He stood in a pond and held a blade of holy grass in one paw and a gold bracelet in the other. Then he started shouting, Ladies and gentlemen, a gold bracelet for charity. A greedy traveler was passing by. He asked, How can I believe you that you would not harm me? The tiger replied, I know that it is not easy to believe, but a holy man has advised me to do charity, so I am doing this for charity. In any case, I am quite old. My teeth and claws are of no use, so do not be afraid of me. The traveler believed him and went into the pond, but got stuck in the deep mud. Oh, do not worry, I will help you, the tiger said, and he slowly waded towards the traveler and grabbed him for his meal. The Thankless Hippo 
There lived a selfish hippo near a lake. He used to eat loads of food and never left anything for other animals. Once all the animals decided to have a picnic near the lake. Everyone was playing, but the hippo was eating. After having a good meal, the hippo dived into the lake. But he had become very heavy due to overeating and he got stuck in the muddy lake. He shouted for help. The other animals rushed to the lake and saved him. Immediately after he was rescued, he pushed the other animals aside and rushed to the place where food was kept. The animals became very angry and decided to teach him a lesson. They made a pie of yam and soap and gave it to the hippo. Hey hippo, see, we have made a pie for you. The hippo ate the pie. After eating the pie, he went to relax in the lake. He then realized that whenever he tried to speak, lots of bubbles appeared from his mouth. He felt terribly upset and never ate other animals' food again. The Lion's Wedding Once upon a time, there was a fierce young lion in the Dane Tree Forest. All the animals of the Dane Tree were afraid of him. One day, the lion decided to look for a suitable match for himself. Within a few days, he found a beautiful lioness. After consulting the priest, an auspicious date was set. The lion wanted to invite all the animals of the Dane Tree. He thought, maybe this way I can make them realize that I am kind-hearted. Though the animals were invited, they did not go. Later, the bear asked the elephant, why did you not go to the lion's wedding? The elephant replied, I am strong, but I still fear the lion. Then he asked the bear, Why did you not go there? The bear replied, I could not collect sufficient honey. The lion would have been upset and may have even killed me. Thus, all because of the needless fear that the animals felt, none attended the gentle lion's wedding. The Douglas Fir Cone Once there was a mouse in the red forest. He was scared of a sly fox. The fox always made different plans to catch him and try to kill him. But the mouse was smart enough to escape every time. One day, the sly fox managed to encounter the mouse. The mouse got very scared and ran off as fast as he could. But he knew that the fox was the faster so he frantically searched for a place to hide. He found a Douglas fir cone that he thought was big enough to hide him. So he scurried inside. The mouse hid himself so well in that cone that the fox could not find him. And to this day, you can see the hind legs and the tail of the mouse sticking out from the Douglas fir cone where he is still hiding from the fox. The Cock and the Sun It was a hot summer afternoon in the forest of Amazonia. All the animals were complaining about the heat and cursing the sun. The sun felt very hot. That day, the sun decided that it would never come out again and as a result, the earth became cold and dark. Many animals died due to extreme cold. The older animals decided to send Mr. Cock, their messenger, to the sun for talks. The cock asked the sun, Why have you stopped coming out? The sun replied, I shine throughout the day to give you light, but you animals keep on cursing me. I refuse to shine again. Mr. Cock cried, If I return in darkness, the fox will eat me. And the cock flew away. After some time, the sun heard a loud call. Immediately, the sun rose up and the entire earth shone bright. However, the sun could not find the cock anywhere. Since then, whenever the cock calls out, crows, the sun promptly comes up and shines bright. 
द बिगेस्ट फिश डोना एडी एंड कैली द थ्री ब्राउन बेर्स वेन फिशिंग वन डे आई एम गोइंग टू कैच द बिगेस्ट फिश टूडे एडी पोस्टेड डोना ब्रांड नो आई एम गोइंग टू कैच द बिगेस्ट फिश एडी ग्राउंड एंड टैंगल्ड हिज हुक्ड वॉम इन टू द वॉटर कैली स्माइल्ड आई एम गोइंग टू स्विम अराउंड एंड कैच अ फिश द बिगेस्ट फिश स्टेज एट द बॉटम ऑफ द पॉन्ट सो कैली जम्प इन टू द पॉन्ट द अदर टू बेर्स सैट पेशेंटली वेटिंग फॉर एनी फिश टू ईट देयर वॉम्स एंड गेट कॉट ऑन देयर हुक्स I have caught one Eddie shouted It is the biggest fish I am sure A few minutes later Donna started to jump around I have caught one too Wow it is bigger than yours Eddie she said Soon Kelly also brought up one big fish She was also excited Eddie put Kelly's fish next to his Yours is the biggest fish My fish was a big fish. Donna's fish was bigger than mine, but yours is the biggest of all. Two frogs. It was a nice rainy season. A group of frogs was playing together. Suddenly, two of them fell into a deep pit. The other frogs saw that the pit was too deep so they started encouraging those two frogs to give up instead of trying to jump up but both of them ignored the comments and tried to jump up out of the pit with all their might the other frogs kept telling them to stop finally one of the frogs gave up he fell down and died the other frog continued to jump as hard as he could Once again the crowd of frogs yelled at him to stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out the other frogs asked, "Did you not hear us?" The frog did not reply as he was deaf. He thought they were encouraging him the entire time. The false friends Once they lived a hare in the jungle. She thought that she was very famous among all the animals. One day the hare heard that the dogs were out hunting for her, but she was confident that her friends would save her. So she went to the horse and asked him to carry her away on his back, but he declined. She then asked the bull, but the bull refused. I am very sorry, but I have an appointment with a doctor. She went to the sheep with her problem. The sheep said, "Another time, my dear friend, I do not want to interfere in the present situation, as dogs have been known to eat sheep as well as hares." The hare then asked the calf as a last hope. The calf regretted and did not take the responsibility upon himself. He was also scared as many older animals than himself had declined to help. By this time, The dogs were quite near and the disappointed hare took to her heels and luckily escaped on her own. The two parrots. Once upon a time there lived a parrot in a forest with his brother. Both lived happily together, hunting and singing. One day King Lion's minister, Mr. Wolf caught these parrots and took them to the lion's court he said to the king o king i have brought this beautiful pair of parrots especially for you the lion was very happy he kept both the parrots in a cage and ordered his servants to look after them well the parrots were happy one day mr wolf brought a black monkey and presented it to the king The lion was amused to see the monkey's activities. Soon the monkey became the center of attraction. With the arrival of the monkey, the parrots were neglected, but they did not lose hope. They knew that one day they would gain attention again. One day the monkey scared the lion prince. When the king lion came to know about it, he ordered his soldiers 
to leave the monkey back in the forest and the parrots were treated well again. The Flying Frog During the rainy season, the savanna is covered with green grass. Faraji the frog croaked and leapt from rock to rock. Just then, the ground began to shake. What could it be? Faraji wondered. Jilani, an elephant, stepped into the rushing waters and plopped down on his bottom. The impact blew Faraji away. What was that? shouted Faraji. Jilani said, Do you want to fly? Sit on my trunk and I will make you fly. Oh, all right, but only once, Faraji said. Jilani took a deep breath. Here you go. And he blew as hard as he could. The frog went flying through the air. You blew too hard, Faraji shouted as he fell with his back against the tree. That is enough flying for today. Jalani sat in the water, filled his trunk with water and blew it into the air, happy that Faraji was finished with his games. But Faraji hopped over to a lily pad and sat quietly for the rest of the day, rejoicing his flight. The Generous Rabbit Once the rabbit built a fantastic warren. He designed it so well that even a flood that destroyed the entire forest could not harm his warren. Soon, one after another, the homeless animals came to his door asking if they could spend the winter with him in his warren. He provided shelter to all the animals. One day in spring, when all the animals had returned, to their old homes, the rabbit was hopping along so absent-mindedly that he did not realize that a lynx was lying in wait for him. One of the animals who had spent the winter in the rabbit's warren saw this and warned him just in time, asking him to take shelter quickly in his home. The lynx destroyed that home, but soon other animals in the jungle whom the rabbit had helped in the winter provided him with a shelter to hide. This way, the rabbit's life was saved in return for his own generosity to others. Listen to the wise. In a thick, dense jungle, there lived many lions. There were two huge baobab trees in the middle of this jungle. The lions used to kill other animals. The carcasses of the dead animals used to stink and spoil the air. One day, the baobab trees started talking. They said, These lions are polluting our jungle. We must drive them out of here. A wise old tree who stood nearby said, These lions keep us safe from woodcutters. No woodcutter dares to come into our forest. But both the trees ignored his advice. That evening, the baobab trees started shaking violently. Do not do that, shouted the wise tree. But the two trees did not pay heed. They began swaying wildly in the wind and made eerie sounds. All the lions ran away. After a few days, a woodcutter came to the forest and started felling the trees. The two friends cried out, Oh my God, save us! We should have listened to the old wise tree. Unfortunately, it was too late to save them now. The Clever Boar Once a boar lost his way and entered a dense forest. He was scared as any big animal could attack him. But he was a clever boar. Soon, he spotted a cave nearby and decided to settle in it. Many days passed. The boar became quite healthy, hunting and eating small animals in the forest. He made many friends too. One day, a lion noticed the boar. Aha! A boar! So healthy! I will have a delicious meal today. The boar also noticed the lion. The clever boar thought of a plan to escape. As the lion came closer, the clever boar 
looked into the cave and called out, Darling, do not cook anything for dinner. I have just spotted a lion. I am waiting for it to come near. When the lion heard the boar, he turned around and ran for his life. Making Dodo Happy In a big dense jungle, there lived many small worms. Dodo, the youngest worm, never smiled. He was always frowning. One sunny morning, all the worms were enjoying the nice weather. Dodo looked at the beautiful flowers but did not smile. All his friends were concerned about him, so they decided to make him happy. Wendy, Dodo's friend, cheered Dodo. Look at me, Dodo. Wendy started juggling small sandstones. All the other worms were laughing and clapping, but Dodo went away. One of the worms, Susie, said, I know how to cheer Dodo up. Let us paint ourselves in different bright colors and dance in front of Dodo. Dodo, Dodo, come and see what we have done, Susie called. But Dodo still did not laugh. I think we should paint you orange, said Susie. The worms grabbed Dodo and painted him orange. The paintbrush started to tickle Dodo and he started to giggle. So finally, Dodo laughed out aloud. The Pigeon's Hospitality In a jungle, there lived a pair of pigeons in an acacia tree. One evening, Mrs. Pigeon came back early from work. She was waiting for Mr. Pigeon. Suddenly, it started raining and she happened to see a bird catcher coming her way. Mrs. Pigeon saw Mr. Pigeon trapped in the hunter's cage. Oh no, what shall I do now? She said. Soon, it stopped raining. The clothes of the bird catcher had caught wet. He decided to sit under the same tree where the two pigeons lived. Mr. Pigeon looked at his wife and said, This man is shivering. We should help him. Hearing this, Mrs. Pigeon flew around getting dry twigs. She arranged a few stones for the bird catcher and made chirping sounds so that the bird catcher might notice the twigs and light a fire for himself. The bird catcher was overwhelmed by the hospitality of the humble pigeon couple. He opened the cage and set Mr. Pigeon free. The Unseen Enemy One morning, a lion was sleeping peacefully in the jungle. Suddenly, he felt a sting on his nose. As he was in a deep sleep, he ignored it. But this tiny bee didn't stop. It again stung the lion's nose. This time, the lion roared loudly and tried to crush the bee with his paws. But he could not do so. So he sat down quietly. But the stubborn bee dodged the big cat's claws and stung the lion again on his face. The bee was happy on its victory over the lion. Now the bee saw a fox nearby. It headed towards the fox. While doing so, the bee was so excited that it did not notice anything else on its way. Unfortunately, there was a web in its path. The bee got caught in the web and was devoured by the spider. The Arrogant Squirrel Once upon a time, there lived an arrogant squirrel in the forest of Redwood. No one in the forest liked her. In the same forest, there lived a wolf. One day, the wolf hid behind the bushes. His first catch was a mole. The mole was shivering with fear. He called out to his friends, Help! Help! The mole was very kind and had many friends in the forest. Soon, he was rescued by his friends and the wolf had to leave empty-handed. The wolf came again one day and caught the squirrel this time. The squirrel started screaming, but no one came to her help. Suddenly, it started raining and the squirrel managed to escape. But the incident taught her a lesson. 
she changed her behavior towards other animals and became very polite and soft spoken soon the squirrel too had many friends and now she felt safe since she had a big group of friends the stammering bear a bear named brownie lived in the middle of a mountain range full of green fields it was the best place in the world for brownie as it was close to nature and was very safe a group of dogs had discovered the secret place though brownie tried to scare them away by roaring and raising his arms when the dogs were terrified brownie said g g g get out of <laughs> here and all the dogs laughed at his stammering after a few months a group of animals came to the mountain range to build a big cave brownie did not want them to invade his secret place so he practiced very hard to speak without stammering he framed a long dialogue and kept repeating it without stammering after a lot of effort he could speak fluently so he planned to scare them away he finally succeeded in his mission of getting those animals out of his secret place bob the cat once upon a time there was a very mischievous storm cat named bob he never obeyed his mother his mother always told him bob do not ever go into the forest one day bob climbed up to the window of his house from there he could see many big trees far away he decided to go there once when his mother was not around bob went deep into the forest towards those big trees he climbed up a big tree suddenly bob heard a loud bark his paws got caught in the branches of the tree and his heart started beating fast he was so badly injured that he started meowing and calling out to his mother his mother was also very worried and searching for him she heard bob's cry and found the place getting in quickly and carefully she untangled bob he cried holding on to his mother tightly and promised that he would never disobey her or go to the forest again the raccoon and the talking frog once there lived a raccoon in a jungle he liked hunting frogs rabbits rats and other small animals one day he caught a frog he thought of making the frog his pet when he was going to put the frog in a jar the frog said i will become a prince if you kiss me i will not kiss the frog screamed the raccoon why do you want to be a prince it is much better to be a talking frog the frog was not convinced but the raccoon told the frog that he could make many friends in the jungle the frog agreed and went to the raccoon's house the raccoon said i will call you willy the next day the raccoon called all the animals of the jungle and showed them the talking frog willy all the animals wanted to be willy's friend willy forgot the idea of becoming a prince now he was happy with the raccoon and his new friends the animal marathon once the king of the jungle the lion announced an animal marathon all the animals were excited about this animal marathon but the lion observed that two of the animals the cheetah and the tortoise were not looking so happy he asked both of them individually why they were not looking happy about the animal marathon the tortoise said your majesty i am very slow even if i try hard i can never win the cheetah said i will certainly win as i am the fastest animal but then there would be no fun in the contest for the others the lion thought for a while and said mr tortoise you can fire the pistol at the starting line and mr cheetah you can carry the marathon torch finally the matter was resolved and all the animals happily took part in the animal marathon the monkey and the tutu skirt a monkey lived on the bank of river nile 
she liked to try on new costumes. A raccoon was her best friend. One day, the monkey gave the raccoon a surprise visit. The raccoon was taking a bath and did not hear the monkey get into her house. The monkey saw a pink tutu skirt lying on the bed and immediately picked it up. She wore the skirt and went away. When the raccoon came in after her bath, she saw that her pink tutu skirt, which she was going to wear, was missing. So, she took out another dress, wore it and went out for a walk. When the raccoon reached the bank of the river, she saw something pink up on the palm tree. It was the monkey who climbed up the palm tree wearing the pink tutu skirt. The monkey was looking really good in that tutu skirt. So, the raccoon gladly decided to present her pink tutu skirt to the monkey. Piggy has to wash up. There lived a piglet in a jungle. His name was Piggy and he had two siblings. He loved playing in the mud. Piggy used to dance crazily in the mud whenever his neighbor Aunt Sophie played music. At lunch time, mom and dad used to ask all the piglets to wash themselves up and remove the mud. But Piggy liked to have mud all over him. He did not like water at all. He did not like going out when it rained. One day, Piggy felt terribly ill. His father called Dr. Elephant to check him up. Dr. Elephant said, Piggy, you have fallen ill because you do not wash your mouth before having food. I instruct you to wash your hands and mouth properly before and after having food. Otherwise, you will never get well. Poor Piggy. He promised Dr. Elephant that he would wash himself regularly. Winter Nights in the Forest On a winter night, all the animals of the jungle were shivering with cold. By midnight, the temperature dipped below 0 degree Celsius and many animals fell seriously ill. Dr. Dove was watching all these animals. The next morning, a dog complained. I could hear the sound of my teeth chattering as I shivered in the night. Though we are big, we too felt very cold, said an elephant. I have an idea, said Dr. Dove. Let us all move into a nearby cave and spend our winter nights there. The animals agreed. It was night again. All the animals were inside the cave, but still they were shivering. They asked Dr. Dove for a solution. Dr. Dove asked them to collect dry twigs, make a small heap and set it on fire at the mouth of the cave. After lighting the fire, the cave became warm and all the animals slept comfortably. They made it a daily routine and enjoyed the winters. Team effort can solve big problems. The Quail and the Tomcat In a jungle, there lived a quail. In her neighborhood, there lived a tomcat. The quail was the mother of four chicks. She was always scared of the tomcat. But the tomcat was very loving towards the chicks. One day, in spite of her fear, mother quail went out with her chicks for a walk near the pond. The tomcat followed them with his camera. He wanted to take pictures of those chicks. Suddenly, Mother Quail heard some sound. She immediately checked on her chicks and was shocked to find one of her chicks missing. The tomcat had also heard the sound. He followed the sound and found that it was coming from a hole. The tomcat put his paw inside the hole and found the missing chick there. He took out the chick carefully and handed it to Mother Quail. Mother Quail was very happy and relieved and thanked the Tomcat. Finally, Mother Quail and Tomcat became good friends. The Foolish Rabbit Once, a dog was wandering about in a forest. Suddenly, he came upon a grassy patch and saw a rabbit busy eating the grass. The dog decided to chase the rabbit. The rabbit noticed the dog coming towards him. 
he ran as fast as he could to save himself from being killed. As the dog was getting nearer, the rabbit was unable to run anymore. He hid behind a bush. Unfortunately, due to his hunger, the rabbit ate the leaves of the bush and became visible to the dog. The dog saw the rabbit and tried to catch him with a single leap. The rabbit immediately ran towards his burrow as fast as he could. But alas, the rabbit could not make it to his burrow and the dog succeeded in catching him. The rabbit got caught due to his foolishness. He ate the leaves of the bush behind which he had been hiding safely. The mouse plays a trick. A forest was located near a seashore. All the animals in the forest used to make fun of the mouse's tiny size. One day, the mouse thought of challenging the shark and the elephant to a game of tug of war. He called the shark and asked her to remain near the seashore. The mouse told her that he would give her a long rope and when he would ask him to pull, the competition would start. He conveyed the same message to the elephant and asked him to stand behind the trees near the seashore. The mouse then cleverly tied the rope both to the shark's tail and to the elephant's body too. He yelled, Pull! Both the animals, the elephant and the shark pulled the rope. But to their shock, they just could not pull it. They thought, that little mouse could not possibly be stronger than we. But finally, they shouted out an exhaustion. Oh mouse, we surrender. We will never mock you again. The Pigeon Scholar One day, an elephant was very happy. He invited all the animals and the birds of the jungle to a party. Everyone wanted to dress well. The pigeon who delivered the invitation to the party on behalf of the elephant had no time to dress. All the other animals were nicely dressed up. When the pigeon saw this, he felt very bad. He said to the animals, Sadly, I have no new dress, so I will come in my old dress itself. The elephant felt sorry for the pigeon and thought of cheering him up. All the animals agreed and said, Do not worry, dear friend. We will arrange something for you. Then all the animals collectively gifted him a sparkling collar. The pigeon was very grateful and happy. Since that day, all pigeons wear sparkling blue purple collars. The Clever Mouse Once upon a time in a jungle, a baby mouse and a mother mouse lived in a small hole in King Lion's cave. The hole was warm and had lots of food to eat. One day, the mother mouse was about to take the baby mouse out for a walk. Just outside the cave, they saw a huge ginger tomcat licking his lips, waiting to eat them up. Clinging to his mother's tail, the baby mouse cried, Mother, mother, what should we do? The mother mouse knew exactly how to deal with big scary cats. So she paused, staring up into the beady eyes of the hungry cat. She then opened her mouth and took in a deep breath. Woof! Woof! She shouted. And the cat ran away as fast as he could, wondering how a dog could look like a mouse. That was amazing! The baby mouse said to his mother, smiling happily. The mother mouse said, My child, that is why it is always best to know a second language. King Cobra and the Ants Once there lived a king cobra in a small hole in the jungle. When he was small, he ate little creatures. As he grew older and bigger, he began to eat eggs, lizards, frogs and rabbits. And when he grew up further, he even started eating other smaller snakes. His pride grew with him. 
all the small animals began to fear king cobra one day he thought i must move from this small hole to a bigger place he came across a big tree and decided to live there then he saw an ant hill near the tree and thought why should there be an ugly ant hill near my royal house he hissed aloud i am king cobra i order the ants to vacate this place immediately there was no reply he became angry and struck at the ant hill what a surprise thousands of ants swarmed up all over the king cobra biting him everywhere the king cobra could not bear the pain and ran away the kind sparrow a mean crow and a kind sparrow lived on the same tree one night the sparrow ran short of water and sent her children to borrow some water from the crow the crow said i cannot give you water just because i am your neighbor the kind sparrow told her children it's all right we will share whatever we have that night it rained heavily water damaged the crow's nest so he went to the sparrow's nest and asked for help the sparrow said you can sleep in the basement the crow saw a sack of beans in the basement he was hungry and started eating all the beans in the morning his stomach had swollen up the crow said i ate all the beans and now my stomach has swollen the kind sparrow said don't worry i'll call the doctor immediately the sad crow apologized for what he had done before from then on they became good friends the cockatoo's yellow crest several years ago cockatoos were all white all the other birds used to tease them that they had no color but if you look at a cockatoo today you will notice that its crest is yellow one day a cockatoo was wandering in the jungle it was searching for food suddenly it saw something strange lying on the ground what is it wondered the cockatoo when the cockatoo got closer it said wow they are feathers yes they were three colored feathers the cockatoo picked them up and put them on its tail when it went walking the other birds noticed that those feather belonged to them and not to the cockatoo they started to pluck out the cockatoo's feathers the cockatoo flew away quickly and hit the sun the sun was so hot that it made the cockatoo's crest yellow and it came shooting back down to the earth from that day onwards cockatoo started having yellow crests realization of a mistake once a doe and her parents lived in a jungle the parents were very unhappy with their daughter the doe because she was always fighting with them one day the doe left her abode and went to a nearby jungle and started staying with her friends once the doe and her friend were resting in a cave suddenly they heard the roar of a lion the doe said to her friend what shall we do now this lion will kill us her friend replied we are too small to help each other i am going my way you take care of yourself now the doe remembered how her parents saved her during any crisis she realized her mistake the doe fled from the cave and soon returned to her parents her parents were very happy to see their daughter back the doe realized her mistake and promised to behave better be thankful it was a hot summer day after wandering for many hours a bull sat down to take some rest chewing cud with his eyes half shut all of a sudden he realized that a tiny animal was sitting on his horn it was a parakeet Silently she sat on one of the horns of the bull and kept sitting there till it had rested fully the parakeet wanted to show the bull that she had used his horn as a seat without letting him know about it 
After a while, the parakeet asked the bull, Would you mind if I go now? The bull replied, I hardly care when a tiny creature like you comes and goes away after resting on my body. If you had thanked me for using my horn, it would have raised your worth in my eyes. The parakeet felt ashamed and flew away. The Stupid Sparrow Once there lived a crow and a sparrow in a jungle. They both were good friends. On the birthday of the king of birds, the eagle, all the birds went to his castle at the seashore. The crow and the sparrow also went there along with all the other birds. On the way, the two birds saw a cow with a pot full of curd on her head walking ahead of them. The wicked crow, true to his nature, followed the cow and kept dipping his beak into the pot and eating the curd. The sparrow also flew over the cow and sat on the pot. Now a bull was following the cow. When the crow saw the bull, he got frightened and immediately flew away. But the stupid sparrow could not fly at time. The bull caught her and punished her. The sparrow should have known that the wisest thing to do is to shun evil company or one may come to grief. The Fasting Monkeys One day, a group of monkeys decided to go on a fast. The oldest monkey asked the youngest one to bring some bananas to be eaten later in the evening. Suddenly, the wife of the chief monkey asked, Why don't we peel one banana and keep it ready to eat? Yes, let us do that, shouted a fat monkey in agreement. All right, said the chief monkey. So the monkeys peeled their bananas and carefully kept them ready for eating in the evening. Can I keep a banana in my mouth? I promise not to eat it till the evening. Please? A little monkey asked his father. Why don't all of us put bananas in our mouths too? That way we can chew them immediately when we break our fast, suggested his father. So the monkeys put the bananas in their mouths. One by one, they eyed one another uncomfortably as they began their fast. Within no time at all, the bananas disappeared down their throats and that was the end of their fast. The Rat's Tail Long ago, no animal had tails. One day, the lion decided that all animals should have tails and he designed a tail for each animal. When the tails were ready, he called all the animals. All the animals went except the rat. The rat felt too lazy and asked a monkey to fetch his tail on his behalf. The lion had selected a long furry tail for the rat. He gave that to the monkey to be taken to the lazy rat. The monkey had been given a nice long tail, but as he was going home, he was tempted by the rat's tail and attached it to himself. The rat was very disappointed when he learnt that the monkey had kept his tail, but he was too lazy to pursue the monkey to give his tail back. So he attached the tail which was given to the monkey and that is why rats have long tails. The Frog with Two Wives Once there lived a frog who had two wives. His first wife lived in Santa and the second wife lived in Clara. He went sometimes to Santa and sometimes to Clara to see his wives. Once the little frog came to him and said, Come to Santa please. Your first wife has a nice pudding for you. The frog was very happy because he liked pudding very much. He was ready to go when another little frog came up to him and said, Please come to Clara. Your second wife has a nice pudding for you. The frog sat down and began to think, If I go to Santa, my second wife will get angry. If I go to Clara, my first wife will get angry. Where should I go now? 
he sat and thought for a long time and then he leapt quickly to santa and within a few minutes he leapt back to clara since then frogs are leaping all the time the lost wolf cubs once there lived an old wolf in the jungle who had no children one day he was wandering in the jungle when he saw two wolf cubs playing under a tree he looked here and there and saw that nobody was watching and stole them after a few days news spread all over the jungle that the two cubs of the wolf king had been stolen on hearing this news the old wolf went far away from that jungle so that nobody might find him he raised those two cubs as his own children years passed and the old wolf fell ill before he died he told the cubs who they really were the cubs decided to find their real parents on reaching the jungle they saw that the wolf king was being attacked by a bear they rushed to save their real father the wolf king asked who are you and i have never seen you before the cubs told him their story the overjoyed king hugged the cubs thus the lost wolf cubs finally found their real family the foolish tiger one day in a jungle a tiger attacked a fox the fox cried out how dare you attack the king of the jungle the tiger roared in anger Grrr. he looked at the fox in amazement and said i am the king of the jungle not you the fox replied all the animals run from me in terror if you want proof come with me first they went near a herd of deer the deer saw the tiger behind the fox and ran away in all directions Next they went near a group of monkeys the monkeys saw the tiger behind the fox and they too fled the fox turned to the tiger and said do you need more proof than that see how the animals flee at the very sight of me the foolish tiger said i am surprised forgive me for attacking you my lord i agree that you are the king of the jungle never ignore enemies once upon a time the crows and owls were enemies one day all the crows in the jungle made their homes in a huge banyan tree the tree had hundreds of branches the king of the crows ensured security for his brood but was not very vigilant he did not know that some owls had settled in a nearby cave on the other hand the owls who made a colony in a cave near the banyan tree were very vigilant they had a king who ruled with the help of a strong and cunning army the owl king kept a close eye on the crows and every night his army killed any crow they sighted outside the tree slowly the owl king managed to kill all the crows that were seen outside the tree that is why wise men have always said that whoever neglects the enemy perishes in his hands the fat whales once a flock of whales lived together in a jungle some of the whales were fat while some were lean the fat whales always used to make fun of the lean ones you poor skinny things they would say they called them rags and bones and other rude names too one day the baboon's wife came into the yard to choose some quails for the evening's meal she said to herself i will not have those thin birds they are not worth eating these fine fat ones however will make us a splendid dinner she caught a couple of fat quails and took them with her as they were being carried into the kitchen to be killed and cooked for dinner the fat quails wished they had been so foolish to have laughed at their lean friends who were now alive and happy the crow and the sea a flock of crows lived in a forest 
far away from the sea. They had never seen the sea. One day they flew very far and reached the seashore. They were very surprised to see the sea waves. One crow said, "The water is calling us to play." Another said, "Let us all play with those waves. Aren't they fascinating?" So all the crows rushed towards the waves. Suddenly, a big wave washed over the crows. Some of them were dragged into the water. The others flapped about on the seashore. The crows got angry and said, "Let us punish the sea by drinking it up." Each crow drank as much as possible, but the sea was not affected. Instead, the crows felt sick due to the salty water of the sea. Finally, the crows grew tired and quietly flew back home. The jackal cub. Once a family of lions lived in a dense forest. One day, the lion was prowling through the forest in search of prey. He found a lost jackal cub in the forest. He said to the lioness, "Let us raise him along with our two cubs." The three cubs grew up together as brothers. Some months later, they saw an elephant. The lion cubs faced him bravely, but the jackal cub ran away. The lioness said to the jackal cub, "Do not be ashamed. You are a jackal, and jackals do not attack elephants. But my sons may attack you when they realize that you are not a lion. It is time for you to live with the jackals." The jackal cub understood what the lioness wanted to say, as he knew the lioness loved and cared for him. So he agreed and went in search of other jackals. The wolf saves the tiger. A tiger had been traveling for many months. He covered a long distance across the valleys, over the mountains, and back towards his forest. When he returned home, he was happy because his brothers had organized a welcome feast for him. He exclaimed, "I am lucky to have such loving brothers." But generally, the truth is different from what we know. The tiger's brothers were secretly jealous of him. They planned to kill him by putting poison in his food. The tiger's friend, the giant wolf, overheard the brothers' plan. Thus, before the tiger could eat anything, the giant wolf knocked the food away. At the same time, a small raccoon ran towards the fallen food and started eating it. The raccoon fainted after eating a couple of bites. The tiger's brothers were so afraid of being punished that they ran away and never came back. The delicious dishes. A young she leopard, Tina, lived in the forest. Her brother also lived with her. Tina was an excellent cook and used to make new dishes every day. One day, Tina's brother saw that a young leopard was being attacked by an elephant. This young leopard was new to the territory and was trying to save himself from the furious elephant. Tina's brother saved his life and invited him home to dinner. Tina made a delicious dinner. She took great care that everything was perfect. When the young leopard tasted the delicious food, he asked, "Who made such wonderful food?" Tina came and greeted the young leopard. The young leopard fell in love with Tina and wanted to marry her. Soon they got married. Tina moved to the leopard's territory and realized that he was the king of his region. So Tina became the queen. Care and bravery. Once upon a time, an old gorilla lived in the jungle with his beautiful daughter. His daughter had grown up, so the gorilla was looking for a groom for his beautiful girl. One day, he announced, "Whoever finds the rarest thing on earth can marry her." All the young gorillas agreed and went to look. For the rarest thing, after many days, three young gorillas came to meet the old gorilla. But before they could disclose what rarest thing they had brought, 
they were attacked by another group of gorillas. Among those three gorilla suitors, the first two gorillas began fighting. But the third one checked on the old gorilla and his daughter to see whether they were safe before starting the fight. Then he also joined the fight. When they won the fight, the old gorilla said, The rarest thing are care and bravery. Only the third gorilla deserves to marry my daughter as he has both of these rare things in his character. He is caring as well as brave. The Squirrel's Job One fine morning, Sally the cow was grazing on the mountain side. She saw a little squirrel run past her very fast. Sally followed the squirrel and saw that it had rushed towards the red berry tree. Sally saw the squirrel take a bite from the red berry tree and toss it away. The squirrel kept picking up red berries and after tasting them, left them half eaten. Finally, Sally said, Little squirrel, why do you not eat a full red berry? Why are you wasting these red berries? The little squirrel sat up and said, I want to present the tastiest and the juiciest red berries to my mother. Without tasting, how would I know which red berry is the tastiest and the juiciest one? I will taste all the red berries, but there are so many that I cannot possibly check them all. Then the squirrel went back to her job. The Three Kittens Once there were three kittens. All the three kittens were getting bored in their house. So they decided to meet at the riverside. The first kitten wanted to roll in the mud. The second kitten wanted to roll in some coal. And the third kitten wanted to chase birds. Finally, they decided to go for a walk. On their way, they saw a rabbit digging the earth. He wanted to make a burrow. The kittens asked the rabbit if they could help him make his burrow. The rabbit said, Sure. The kittens were excited and they started helping the rabbit. While doing so, all the three kittens got covered with soil. When the making of the burrow was over, they went back home. When they reached home, their parents could not recognize them and so they were scolded. The kittens explained that they helped a rabbit make his burrow. After listening to their story, their parents became happy and praised them. I want sweets. Mia the camel loved eating sweets and candies. She told her mother, I do not want boring food. Fruits and vegetables do not taste good. Ugh! She snorted in disgust. Try eating them, Mia. They taste really good and are good for health too, said her mother. But after tasting sweet dates, Mia had no appetite left for anything else. One morning, Mia got up with a severe stomachache. She went to Dr. Parrot. What have you been eating? Dr. Parrot exclaimed. Mia sank down on her seat. She realized her mistake and was feeling embarrassed. Dr. Parrot took out two of Mia's teeth and cleaned the rest. Mia cried in pain. He gave her an injection to relieve her of pain. But she knew what wrong she had done. Dr. Parrot said, You have worms in your stomach and you have cavities in your teeth. Promise me that you will eat fewer sweet dates and more fruits and vegetables from now on. Slowly, Mia became much healthier. The Frightened Elephant Once there lived an elephant in a forest. The elephant was very scared of everything. Water, wind, rain, other animals and even smaller creatures like mice and worms. He thought Water might drown him, wind might blow him away, rain might make him fall ill and other animals might kill him. His friends and relatives were very worried about him. 
behave like an elephant his friends advised him but he did not know how to do so he was unable to live a free and happy life he always used to hide behind huge trees he was not like the other members of his family one day a wise old cheetah said if you do not want to go near any animal then don't at least stop being afraid of everything if you show your weakness no one will respect you from then on the elephant started talking to other animals and roamed in the forest freely he was finally happy the intelligent reply one day the king of the jungle the lion called an important meeting at his den he called the monkey the zebra the elephant and the fox the lion was very dirty and so was his den the monkey did not dare enter the den due to the bad smell so he left without saying anything unable to bear the smell the zebra covered his nose how dare you cover your nose does my den stink roared the lion the zebra did not have an apt reply and the lion threw him out of the den the king then asked the elephant the same question no it smells of roses replied the frightened elephant the lion was not happy with this answer either and knocked the elephant's trunk he then asked the fox sir i have a cold so i cannot smell anything replied the intelligent fox the lion was happy with his reply and made the fox his minister hippo who wanted to sing once upon a time there was a hippo who lived in a river next to a mangrove forest one day a nightingale nested on the tree the hippo loved her voice but slowly he became jealous he too wanted to sing like her the hippo made up his mind that he would come out of the river climb up the tree perch on a branch and start singing so he tried to climb up the tree when he failed he thought i shall run against the tree until it comes crashing down then he stepped onto the leaves of the fallen tree and began singing unfortunately he just managed to make a lot of noise all the animals laughed at him the hippo stopped singing and realized that he should be happy as he was he used all his strength to raise the tree back up again and look after it until it had completely recovered the invisible king in the jungle of maluba there lived a fly called mozi mozi could roar like a lion he discovered the special ability while still very young when mozi grew up he enjoyed frightening the other animals with his roar expecting to see a terrifying lion no one noticed the little fly who repeated his tricks while making fun of his victims mozi kept saying you will never see me i am leon the fastest and strongest creature in the jungle finally terrified all the animals ended up accepting leon as the invisible king of the maluba jungle one day there came tuga tuga a slightly crazy tortoise he also heard the invisible lion's roars and threats tuga tuga said ha 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 a ghost king let us dance invisible king mozi was offended and he rushed towards tuga tuga all the animals saw mozi the fly rushing and then all of them started laughing at the invisible leon and thus ended mozi's golden days of happiness the fly that roared that threatened that lied so much the wolf and the lamb once an elephant and a lamb were good friends the elephant played the flute in king lion's court one day a wolf caught the lamb 
the lamb saw that the wolf was carrying a flute with him. So he said, I know you are going to eat me. But before you eat me, I would like to hear you play the flute. I have heard that you can play the flute better than anyone else, even better than the elephant. The wolf was so pleased at this that he took out his flute and began to play. When he was done, the lamb insisted on him playing once more. The lamb prompted the wolf and the wolf played again. The lamb's friend, the elephant, heard the sound. The moment he heard the sound, he rushed towards it. And he saw that the wolf had caught the lamb. The elephant gave a nice bashing to the wolf and saved his friend, the lamb. The wolf ran away as quickly as possible. The Boastful Crow A flock of geese flew down to a beach where a crow was hopping around. The crow watched them with disgust. How gracelessly you fly! He said to the geese, All you know is how to flap your wings. Let us have a flying competition. One of the geese took up the challenge. The crow performed a variety of acrobatic acts in the air and flew down, cawing triumphantly. Now it was the goose's turn. He launched himself into the air and began flying over the sea. The crow flew after him, mocking him about his manner of flying. Water stretched endlessly on all sides. Eventually, the crow became so tired that he found it hard to stay in the air. The goose, pretending to be unaware of his plight, said, Why do you keep touching the water? Is it some trick? No, squawked the crow. I am in trouble. Help me, please. The goose took pity on him and with the crow on his shoulders, flew back to the shore. The Stupid Wild Crow Once there was a wild crow for whom having to go out and hunt insects was just a great deal of effort. He was very fond of his comforts. One day he saw that a lioness had kept a parrot in a cage as her pet. He saw that the parrot was well fed. He thought of attracting the lioness's attention so that the lioness might keep him too as her pet. He went in search of colourful feathers and stuck them in between his black feathers. The cubs of the lioness saw this unusual crow and asked their mother to keep it as pet. The crow got easily caught by the lioness and started living with the lion and his family. Soon he started growing weak as he got only grains to eat like other bird pets. Some days later, the wild crow managed to escape from the cage and return home. He was ashamed and embarrassed about his deeds and determined to live freely and hunt for himself. The Fox and the Lion Once upon a time, there lived a fox who wanted to make friends with the lion. But he was very frightened of the lion. His friends tried to warn him about the danger in befriending such a ferocious animal, but he didn't listen to them. I will surely be friends with the king of the jungle, no matter what, he announced. The next day, when the lion passed his way, the fox approached the lion a little closer than before. The fox did not feel so frightened as he used to be before. Next time, the fox came even closer to the lion and asked him about his welfare. The lion also replied in a friendly manner. King Lion, it was nice meeting you. Hope to see you again, said the fox and he left. Now he had no fear of the lion. Eventually, the lion and the fox became friends. The Arrogant Swans In a faraway forest, there was a river. This river was home to many golden swans. The swans spent most of their time on the banks of the river. Every six months, the swans would leave a golden feather as a fee for using the river. 
One day, a homeless crane saw the river. The water in this river seems so cool and soothing. I will make my home here, thought the crane. As soon as the crane settled down near the river, the golden swans noticed her. They shouted, This river belongs to us. We pay a golden feather to the Lion King to use this river. You cannot live here. And the arrogant swans drove the crane away. The crane went to the lion and told him the whole story. The Lion King was angry with the arrogant swans. Leave the river at once or you will be beheaded, shouted the lion. The swans shivered with fright and flew away never to return. The Wolf and the Dog One day a dog went to the woods. After some time, he met a wolf. The dog said to the wolf, Brother Wolf, you look so thin. You should live with me and my master. He gives me good food. The wolf thought for a moment and replied, Yes, you are right. Why should I be out here in the wild hunting for small bites of food when someone else can give it to me? I will come and live with you. Good, said the dog. Then follow me. The wolf noticed a patch around the dog's neck. Brother dog asked the wolf, Why do you have that patch around your neck? That is where my master ties the leash around my neck. He does this so that he may keep me in my place, replied the dog sadly. I would rather starve and be free than be fat and a slave, said the wolf as he returned into the forest. The coyote gets brown color. Many years ago, bluebirds were white in color. One day, a bluebird and his grandfather saw a beautiful blue lake. He stopped and asked, Grandfather, can I be as blue as that lake? His grandfather gave him a song to sing and said, If you dive in this lake for five mornings while singing this song, you will turn blue. The blue bird did so and became blue. The coyote saw this and requested the blue bird, Please teach me your song. The coyote also learned the song and did as told. The coyote also turned blue after five days. So the coyote strutted about in the forest looking around to make sure all the other animals could see his color. But he paid no attention to where he was going. Unfortunately, he ran into a tree, fell down into a mud pit, rolled around and came out brown. This is how bluebirds are blue and coyotes are muddy brown in color. Justice in the Jungle once upon a time, there lived an old kind so in a jungle. She was looking after a lost tiger cub along with her piglet. One day, the wild old so died. By then, the cub had grown up into a tiger and the piglet into a pig. By nature, the tiger wanted to hunt the pig. He said to the pig, Brother, I dreamt of eating you. It is a sin to dishonor a dream. Therefore, I have to eat your flesh. The pig was smart. He said, Let the Lion King decide. Both the tiger and the pig appeared before the lion and narrated the whole episode. A monkey was also present in the court. He said, My lord, I also saw a dream and it is a sin to dishonor a dream. I saw that I was marrying the princess. The Lion King immediately understood what the monkey was trying to say and he instructed the tiger, you will not eat the pig. Hence, justice was done. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.